Cool. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Perceive 2021. We're really excited to have you join us today at our event. And we're pleased to welcome today's speakers, Shelly Sam, who's the Director of Product Solutions Data Sciences at Dentsu, and Abine Basin, who is the Vice President of Data and Product Solutions Data Sciences for Asia Pacific at Dentsu. They'll be talking to us today about the evolution of AI in advertising and its future. Welcome, Shelly and Abine. Awesome, Claudia. Thank you for the very warm introduction. We're really excited and delighted to be presenting at uh, this year's Perceive. Um, we're, we're talking about an, uh, a topic that's really close to our hearts, the evolution of advertising uh, through AI, the way AI actually uh, takes uh, a lot of core functions in advertising and, and how it's likely to be in the future. Um, I think you've already introduced us. So moving on uh, to the next slide. Before diving into the role that AI is actually going to play uh, and, 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 the, and the current scope of what AI is revolutionizing the way brands and audiences connect, uh, we thought it would be a good idea to just take a, a, a brief walk down, uh, uh, walk down memory lane. I think the first idea of what we're trying to do is what is it that advertisers and marketeers are actually set out to do as their jobs, right? And the core function of why we actually exist is to try to change uh, what people know or associate with a brand so that they either want it more or value it more highly or typically both. And the essence of the way you arrive at that is by trying to get as much information about audiences that you know uh, so that you can actually engage with them uh, in a way that resonates with them. And that's where I think uh, the entire industry has moved towards and technology has actually come to support that uh, in that sense. Next slide. So a quick view of how, let's say, modern technologies have actually come into our lives. Uh, I think what we've really done is we've looked at some of the modern applications of technologies like telephone, like radio, like uh, television, and then focus more down uh, towards the app economy. And what we really see is the, the, the more personalized, the more uh, direct the vehicle actually becomes or the way uh, audiences engage with advertising actually becomes, uh, it's taken virtually half the time as you go from each thing uh, uh, to the next level uh, in terms of building the first 50 million users. So tech is now proliferating at a rate uh, which is really a doubling factor at the way brands now reach out to their audiences and audiences actually consume content. Um, move to the next slide. A quick report of uh, Statista actually revealed that brands spent about $650 billion last year uh, in, 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 in terms of the advertising economy. And what that really means is that there's $650 billion spent by advertisers to try to understand audiences, then figure out communication and reach the right message to the right audience at the right time. Next slide. So let's look at the way the digital economy is actually panned out, more pronounced in the COVID-19 uh, world in which we're in today. Uh, the two pillars that have really driven it uh, uh, to where it's actually been is the fact that the amount of data, the amount of information available about audiences has exploded at a rate that could not have been imagined uh, before. And the ability to process that data has actually become far more exponential in terms of the sheer size of the entire uh, economy that caters towards uh, processing that data, as well as processing speeds have uh, gone up exponentially as well. Next. So talking about the sheer volume of data, uh, in a quick internet minute, the, the, the amount of content that is being consumed and thereby the amount of information that is actually available uh, to understand audiences has actually grown and erupted, if I had to uh, say that. So much so that there is more than 20,000 uh, watchers who are actively uh, consuming content of Netflix 
uh, in a quick internet minute. Uh, you have more than a million uh, scrolls that are made on apps like Facebook and Instagram that happen in a minute. So the sheer space at which we're consuming content and thereby getting information about uh, audiences has actually uh, gone up many fold. Um, next slide. And the sheer capability to process that data has actually gone up. So I've taken the example of the US market to show the size of uh, the cloud uh, compute market. And it's actually grown at a, a compound annualized growth rate of 20% uh, since 2008. So it's not just the size of that entire economy that's actually gone up, but the number of providers also that actually uh, are there like AWS, like, like Google Cloud, tons of them that you can actually think of uh, that are actually enabling you to process uh, information at scale uh, to understand audiences better. Next slide. So let's take now that we now that we fundamentally understood that there is like an eruption of information available as well as the ability to process it. Let's see how AI has actually shaped the way, uh, uh, not just the way that brands engage with their audiences, but the way the amount of information about audiences uh, is actually processed to understand better how brands can create content that resonate with the right TG. Um, next. So in 1998 is, I think, the first commonly uh, known scale in terms of where AI actually came into an advertising use case. Uh, there were researchers in Columbia University that actually focused on looking at uh, consumer behavior clustering to figure out predictors of what people are likely to consume next. Uh, that technology actually today is used in a lot of your dating apps like Tinder and Bumble to figure out what an ideal match is likely going to be like. It's used by uh, Netflix in their recommendation engines to predict uh, what is the next uh, content piece that an audience is actually going to consume. So behavioral clustering actually started coming into the forefront uh, in 1998 uh, uh, through studies and research. Uh, moving to 2003, uh, 2013, sorry, is when semantic uh, and clustering analysis actually came into the forefront. I think Yahoo's Wordsmith was actually the first platform that understood content um, all around the internet, uh, figured out something what today you would see as Google's knowledge graph, but basically understanding content and trying to create a quick summary of that uh, completely generated by the computer uh, is what happened in 2013 through Yahoo's product, now Verizon's. Uh, in 2014 is when I think things started picking up a lot of scale, not just uh, in terms of the way content was categorized, but how do you actually serve up, add to the right audience? What is the right bid for it? All of that was, was sort of made mass market by programmatic advertising. Uh, and a lot of key players, especially Google's AdEx actually came into the forefront then when looking at programmatic inventory and trying to buy audiences in the most effective manner was sort of then driven uh, by AI in 2014. Um, in 2015 is when search uh, started being categorized and classified through intent. Google's rank brain algorithm really changed the game uh, in terms of trying from an audience point of view to figure out what is the most relevant queries uh, and, and the ranking of it uh, to sort of be of a better utility to audiences as they search. And what this really then enabled advertisers to do is to try to then figure out uh, what are the accurate keywords uh, that you could try to get audiences in terms of a search context. And that's when uh, things really, really started magnifying uh, in terms of how AI actually shaped even the modern advertising day as we know today. And uh, lastly, I think uh, when we look at uh, when we look at where we are today, AI actually has a prominent role in listening, in learning, in responding uh, through CRM, through ORM systems, by just understanding uh, sentiment of tweets, by understanding sentiment of posts, uh, by figuring out what is the right audiences uh, through either cohort based or through one on one personalization. I think AI has really uh, magnified the way brands and audiences can now form a connect. And, uh, and really has transformed uh, the way advertising is actually done uh, from that point of view. 
I'm now going to hand over to my colleague Shelly. Shelly is going to walk you through uh, the state of AI today and is going to take us through where this is likely to move into the future. All right. So thanks a lot, Abhinay. Thanks for sort of helping the audience understand the reason as to why AI is uh, present in advertising, how it has evolved over time uh, when, it, when it comes to advertising or marketing. So other first thing that we could do is take a quick look at what are the main key areas where AI is heavily used. So the four uh, main areas that we see, the first is something that Abhinay already touched upon, which is audience segmentation. So AI is heavily used to collect and organize large amounts of data regarding users, uh, regarding what their behavior traits are, uh, be it on web or app, and then use that data and segment them into very granular segments uh, based on certain layering of taxonomies. So to give you an example, uh, if, for example, uh, when I use my desktop, uh, I, I do a lot of reading and I see a lot of news articles on desktop. However, my behavior on mobile is completely different. I, I watch a lot of videos on YouTube on mobile, right? The AI is able to then identify how my behavior patterns change based on devices uh, and then bucket me according to and accordingly to different segments. So again, this is a very simple example, but uh, they also consider vast amount of other factors as well. The second uh, area is content matching. So over here, uh, what, what really large ad tech players use is NLP or natural language processing. And they use it to identify the relevancy of an ad. So for example, they figure out what the content of an ad is. So say for example, the ad is about finance. Ideally you would like the ad to be shown on a finance article, right? So using NLP and ad tech player can identify if the ad is being shown on the right article. Adding to it, you can also use NLP for improving brand safety as well. So say for example, uh, a lot of brands will not want to show their ad on sensitive content like alcohol or adult, right? So using NLP, uh, tech players are able to figure out which are these articles and ensure that our ads are not present on those particular landing pages. The third point is bidding and budgeting. So something that Abhinay touched upon, uh, how AI started being heavily used in programmatic in 2014, right? Uh, now what AI does is it helps brands or marketers identify what should be the ideal bid or budget for a particular uh, user. And in, in such a manner that it will allow the marketer to convert them. Now, to do that at scale with large amount of visitors, it's not humanly possible, right? And you need AI to help you out with that. Uh, so a lot of uh, players like uh, Abhine mentioned Google, uh, DB360, be it, or Trade Desk, for example, they use AI in different ways and forms. The last piece is the predictive prediction or predictive analytics. Uh, similar to the first point, AI is used to collect large amounts of data regarding a particular user. Now using this data, what AI can do is actually make predictions and try to figure out if this particular user will actually convert for a, for a particular brand or a particular ad, right? And this significantly helps advertisers figure out what is the right targeting segments or right targeting audience they need to go after, thus obviously improving your uh, ROI for the brand. Now, this is the current state of AI in advertising. Uh, what we thought we'd also look at is start to figure out what exactly is the future for, for AI, right? Uh, now, what we sort of think are the key focus areas in the next few years, uh, they're gonna be one is sentiment analysis, uh, improved prediction, Three is real-time personalization. And the last is AI of AI conversational marketing solutions. Now let's dig a little deeper to exactly what uh, these key areas are. So the first is sentiment analysis. So like I mentioned, currently players are using AI to figure out what the content of a web page or a website is, right? The content is important, but along with that sentiment is also really important, right? And to do that in scale, brands do have to rely on AI. Now, how can sentiment be used in advertising? So there are two key areas. One is contextual advertising. So taking a really quick example. Uh, so what contextual advertising allows you to do, let's say for example, uh, the a web page is talking about uh, say iPhone, right? 
the ad advertising solution, a contextual advertising solution would show ads relevant to that budget. So for in this example, if it's the landing page is about iPhone, the ad would be about iPhone, right? Now let's add sentiment into it, right? So now let's say there are two articles. One is talking positively about the iPhone. The second article is talking negatively about the iPhone. Now in, a, in the positive article, showing an iPhone ad makes complete sense, right? But in the article that's talking negatively about the iPhone, showing an iPhone ad would not really convert well. Rather, you would want to show uh, an ad, a competitor ad, uh, offer, or for example, if you want to show an ad that showcases an Android phone, right? And that's what sentiment analysis allows you to do. Um, so there are, a lot of, uh, there are a lot of AI modules that, uh, models that help with sentiment analysis clarify, for example, has, uh, has their own AI module as well. Uh, the second key area is content generation. So uh, I'm sure some of you might be aware, uh, AI is being used, for example, GPT-3 is being used to create content uh, that's powered by AI, right? It's machines that are actually creating those interesting pieces of content. Now, to improve that content, uh, you would ideally want to add some sentiment around it, right? So for example, if I could tell the AI, create a blog post that talks real positive things about, uh, uh, let's say Nike shoes, right? Now, if now with that, with the, with the use of sentiment a, uh, analysis, the AI is able to create content that resonates or is more human-like than machine-like uh, with the help of such AI modules. The next area that I want to cover is improved conver uh, conversion predictions. Uh, like we touched upon, AI is being used currently to predict and optimize certain ad campaigns, right? But it's still in the very nascent stage. Right, uh, brands are slowly trying are understanding the impact that AI can bring into their ad campaigns. So for example, in a recent study, they, they found out that using AI, uh, they saw an improvement in their ROI, in their revenue growth of up to 40%. That's a huge improvement for the use of AI. And what we predict is that a lot more brands will start using AI uh, for their for driving their marketing or their digital marketing campaigns. And with this additional, and with that, obviously there's going to be a lot more data that they're going to bring into the machines, right? With more data, we predict that the accuracy of the AI will also improve. And you should, uh, and we believe that the brands should see a lot better results in terms of uh, end ROI and, and, in, and in efficiency as well. The next uh, area that we, that we predict we see high growth is on, on real-time personalization. So uh, this was actually an ad. So on the left, you, actually, you can see an ad that was, it's a concept ad that was actually created with partnership with Saatchi, Clear Channel, and Posterscope. Now, uh, what this ad basically showed, or the out, this digital outdoor hoarding showed was, uh, it was an ad about, a, uh, you could say like a mock coffee shop. And the AI system had about thousand different content pieces and text pieces, and based on the user that showed up in front of the camera and what their reaction was, the creative would change, right? And this was way back in 2015 when AI was still sort of being experimented in the digital media. Uh, what, we, what we predict is with the advancements that you've seen in AI with NLP, with content generation, we predict uh, that real-time personalization uh, or real-time personalization experiences Will will see an increase in the year in the in the recent years. Now, in order for us to deliver that kind of experience, that there are three main components. One is obviously we need to uh, the AI needs to segment these audiences into very granular buckets, like we mentioned. The second more key area is they need to process signals uh, at a real time pace, right? So, for example, uh, what we uh, what I personally see is that in the future maybe what we could have is uh, again, a really simple example. Imagine you have a digital hoarding in an airport, right? And based on the flight or, or based on the recent flight that lands on that particular airport, you could show a different creative. So say, for example, uh, 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 an aeroplane from, from France has recently landed in the airport, right? You could show a French creative. An aeroplane from Germany has this recently landed. Accordingly, the creative would change and show a German, I uh, show a creative in a German language, right? Now, in order to do that, you obviously need to process all these live signals that the that, um, 
that the AI might get from a database. And using those live, live signals, the AI will also need to instantaneously create new ad content, right? And with the advancements that we've made with AI uh, in the last few years, uh, we can see this to become a reality in the next maybe five to six years down the line. The last piece that I want to touch upon is AI conversation marketing solution. And a really good example of this uh, are chatbots, right? I, I think now a, a lot of uh, companies are using chatbot at least for support. So, and uh, some of them are doing it really well, right? Sometimes even I'm, I'm, I'm unsure if it's a human out there or if it's a machine out there, but we can also move that into advertising, into marketing as well. So this was an ad uh, created by Tommy Hilfiger back in 2017, which allowed a user to actually chat. You could click on the ad and you can actually chat to a bot uh, and the bot would help you figure out what, uh, what kind of clothing would best suit you and would help you basically make that purchase decision. Again, with the advancements that we've seen with sentiment analysis, with content generation, we predict that the AIs are gonna get better. They're gonna be seen more like humans, right? And this in, is going to help brands with improved engagement. Improved engagements have been proven, and there have been a lot of studies uh, on it, uh, and are proven to show that that improves your brand loyalty as well. And I think you can all agree with improved brand loyalty, you ideally see higher conversions as well. And uh, we predict that these four main areas that, that I sort of highlighted, uh, which is sentiment analysis, uh, improved conversion predictions, your real-time personalization, and your AI conversation marketing solutions are going to be big players or big areas to invest in in the next uh, coming years. With that note, uh, what I'd like to say is that over the period, uh, I think we all started off with, as humans, we started off consuming static content. We slowly moved to audio content, then we moved to video content. And now we're in the era of interactive content, right? And with all, and with this age of interactive content, we have a lot more data signals like Abhinay touched upon, right? And with those data signals, uh, brands need to rely a lot more on AI to make use of it, to improve their engagement, to improve brand loyalty, and at the end of the day also improve the brand's ROI. Uh, with that note, uh, I would like to say thank you all uh, for joining in uh, to a small this is talk on the evolution of AI and its future, uh, evolution of AI in advertising and its future. Uh, I wish you well and hope you guys have a good rest of the day.